really breaks my heart. Cause we've been lied to, misled for years. Calling out to the post, high on this trail of tears. Crazy wickedness, craziness going on, and we've talked about those um, mixed animals and mixed breeds and mixed the Nephilim. That was all part of that that happened. And the father's just like, man, I, I got to get rid of all this, but those spirits still dwell. Go ahead, brother. A covenant was made. The Most High made a promise, and Israel made a promise. Yes, we did. We, we accepted it like generationally, like we just told them, like, yeah, we're gonna do it. We're with you. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep our children. We're going to listen to everything we said. But did we? No. However, Israel did not keep their promise and started to serve the gods of the nations after Joshua's death. And if you think about it, timeline, like, generationally timeline, if, we, if there was somebody in our family that was 100 years old in, in, a, in a generation of time, somewhere in the family, somebody would have said something. There would have been some kind of verbal communication of it. And the only one the only one of our tribes that have that verbal communication that keeps things old are the Gadites. They don't write a lot of their information. No, they speak it to each other. The Gadites always, and if you, once you start traveling to the Gadites, you know, we'll go a little off on this, but when you go to their uh, powwows and their, and their actual reservations, they have, they have their written word in their stories, in their uh, places that they have with their displays and stuff, where it parallels to what's going to happen. It goes all the way back to the stories. It goes all the way back. In Mount Pleasant, when we went there, they have a, uh, a little exhibit area there. And they talk about it, but they talk about it according to their understanding of what they know because it's been washed down. It's been, it's been put to in terms where they understand the world, not to the Father. We're looking at it, so they know. Like, we're people's spirit. They know we're brothers. So we connect. The guys, they know. <sighs> Let's see. I know we talked about Dagon, but I think we're going to pass that off. We covered that already. Let's go to, let's go to the, um, let's go to the next commentary now. Because of disobedience, key properties of the Israelites, such as the Ark of the Covenant. So when we think about the Ark of the Covenant, you think when it goes in somebody else's hand, they're gonna have, they're gonna wield it. No. The Most High made that covenant with us. Whoever has that covenant will wield it. So it don't matter if they have it. It don't matter if they go searching after it. It was for us. We have that. It's for us. Keep going, brother. Such as the Ark of the Covenant fell into the hands of Israel's enemies. At the same time, having such an important piece of Israelite property, the Gentiles understood that it was a curse for them and their gods to keep this property in their possession. And that was when we read earlier about the, the Dagon and the head was off and that was going on. So they were like, man, we, they understood what was going on. They're like, what? They do, just like they know right now in the world, if we come back to the Father, what do you think these Gentile nations are? They're still here, just like we're still here. Do you think that their families taught them as soon as they wake up, we're going to have problems. If they start educating, if they start getting education and understanding and reading and learning and looking at the history and looking at, you know, uh, geography or anything like that, where they're going to be like, wait a minute, what's this mean? What does that mean? They're going to wake up. So let's control what they're going to education with us. Let's control what they understand. Let's keep it. We'll, we'll teach them what we want them to know so we can make it operate for us. Let's go to, let's go to 2 Kings um, chapter 5, verse 17. And we're going to get back into to, uh, where the elders put out some of the naming of these gods and um, what, what they're part of, what they did, and how we, what we partook with it. How, you know, like, and go back to what I was saying, like, if we had somebody in our family that told us, like, you know, back in the day, we couldn't do this. 
back in the day, you weren't supposed to have that. And if you think about back in the day, the respect of each other, the respect of a man and a woman, all that's changed right now too. There is, that's gone too. Um, the respect from growing up, and I remember we, we, you had a respect, like if somebody was a sister of one of your friends, you had to respect them. Now, the brother will look at his own sister and be like, go ahead, go, go do what you can do. So see, you know, if you can, you can make your move on my sister, they just have no care. I don't even care about their own blood, their own family, but we know that's the scripture that's gonna happen. But it wasn't like that before. The generation, we can see it. We can see how this happened. And generation two, while this is going on, the uncles, the grandfathers, um, the ones that are supposed to be the elders, the ones that are supposed to play their role, accept their position where they're at in life so that they can teach. The world is teaching them, oh, you still got time. Enjoy your youth. You got more time. Be young. Let's go do this. Um, don't you want to travel? You're living longer. Not letting the generations get in line in order like the house has to be in order. Tough love. Tough love. Grandmothers and grandfathers don't want to do that tough love no more. You know, they just want to be have it easy. Take that other one. I already raised my kids, and you know, and then some of them are still stuck with raising them anyway, but they don't have the strength of the hand to, to take care of them like they used to. And the parents are still, it's still generationally, and this is this is the part of us. This is what we're going through. Let's get it out. Second Kings chapter five verse seventeen. And Naaman said, Shall there not them? I pray thee, be given to thy servants two mules burden of earth. For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offerings nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Most High. Verse 18. And this thing the Most High pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Ramon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Ramon. When I bow down myself in the house of Ramon, the most high part thy servant in this thing. So the backdrop to this story is this, is, this soldier, Naaman, was under his master. His master was part of holding us, Israel, captivity. And, it, and it, you read back in Kings and it'll, it'll clear it up. But this servant was told by one of our Israelite sisters, like, if you go to this, you know, we, we, I know oh, my God can heal you. And he went and he got healed. And this is him telling our prophet, saying, I don't wanna have trouble with the Most High because I know that he healed me and your God is real. And, it, and I know this is real, so I'm, I'm, let me offer him something here so that when I do have to go on the servitude of my master, the most high is going to look at me and it'll be okay. And the prophet said, yeah. And the most high said, yeah. Because he recognized him and, and uh, held him and understood that, man, your God is real. But let's see what, you know, that was that story, but let's see what these, the house of Ramon. So the, the elders are just describing it. Let us know who they are. Go ahead, brother. A Syrian deity, a local representation of Hadad, the power of storm, rain, and thunder. In Syria, this power is called Baal, the Lord par excellence. And to the Assyrians, he was known as Ramano, the thunderer. So they'll remake and rename a god just like they'll remake and name, rename cities to whatever it fits, to cover up stories, to cover up lands. You ever wonder why um, in history, cities never remain their same name? If we go back to Jerusalem and all those towns and everywhere else, Constantinople, all those names have changed. They don't even call it anymore. They'll do it, they don't do it in the United States because well, we're, if you look at the country, if you look at the United States as a whole, this is still young. There's not a lot of history here. We go back to George Washington, so we're like, we could actually see that. You know, you look at the history of this country, but the history back then goes way further back. Way further back. And they'll change the names and change the, 
everything around us so it will never be the same. Alexandria is not going to be Alexandria, and all these other names be changed. So they'll be hidden. They don't got to hide nothing in America because they're at the point where they got, you know, they're running into it. It don't matter now. But back then, if we start reading and understanding it, because it makes it harder for us to try, backtrack and see what's really going on. When you go and I look into Ishikar in our history, it it'll, it'll only go back to so far in the Aztecs. It only go go far to the back of this prophecy of the Eagle Landing, and that's where you know Mexico was founded. It only goes so far back. There is definitely more going on. And me and my brother are doing research on it, and hopefully we'll bring it out too. So let's get to Second Kings again. Uh, let's go to chapter Second Kings chapter seventeen, verse twenty-nine. And this is where, man, it starts, work, it starts talking about what happened with us. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 29. How be it every nation made powers of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in their cities wherein they dwell. Verse 30. And the men of Babylon made Sukuth Benoth, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima. And these names and these and these uh, these gods that he's naming, Israel knows that these are not the Most High, that these are not the gods to be worshipped, right? And watch when the story keeps the, 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 the scripture, the storyline of what's going on, why this is being told, because the second Kings is telling us a history of what happened. Like, we know we f they feared the Most High, but they wanted to fear Him and honor Him through these other gods. Because they really didn't fear Him, but they knew Him. Because they believed that they could, they could work through and get to the Most High through these gods. It's, and, and we know in, in the A, Most High says, none of this is, I want none of this. No other gods before me. And watch out, let's go ahead. Verse 31. And the Abbas made Nimhazes and Tartak and the Seharvites burnt their children in fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the powers of Shafarin. So this is where it tells it, where you gotta understand what you're trying to say, what it's, what's saying the second kings, go ahead brother. Verse 32, so they feared the most high and made unto themselves of the lowest of their them priests of the high places. So they knew they should be doing this and they chose some simpleton dudes to become the priests in the high places. Go ahead, brother. With sacrifice for them in the houses of the high places. And they still, they still feared to be known, but they were just gonna do that. Like, we'll be okay. Most sides gonna be okay with us. We're just, you know, we'll, use, we'll let them do the work of that. But he still loves us, he's still with us. No, go ahead, brother. Verse 33, they feared the most high and served their own powers after the manner of nations whom they carried away from this. After the manner of nations, so just like what's going on right now, in my ignorance or whatever's going on, I will go to church and be a good Catholic, I will go to church and be a good whatever denomination, whatever you want to call it, all those that are out there, I won't start giving out any names, calling out names, but thinking that we're doing right to the Father, blind, now blind, it's going on still right now. Blind thinking we're doing the right to the Father. Like, I don't need to listen to you. There's a lot of good right here. I don't need to learn anything from you. I'm not going to. But you know, when we start reading that scripture, we do error because we're supposed to always have search from the Father and ask, am I still supposed to be here? What's going on, Father? Help me and, and understand. It's supposed to be nonstop continuing. We're supposed to be always asking for help all the time because now we're being lullaby to understand whatever's being told to us. We're accepting it, but no question. Go ahead, brother. Verse 34. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Most High, neither do they after their statutes, or after their ordinance, or after the law and commandments, which the Most High commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. 
verse 35, with whom the Most High had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other powers, nor bow down, bow yourselves to them, nor serve them for sacrifice to them. So here we are getting told again. We knew this. We're getting told again. So that should have been like a light turned on. Something should have been like, well, what are you talking about? Go ahead, buddy. Verse 36. But the Most High, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. Verse 17, and the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear of the powers. So they know they're being like this, they're understanding this, right? They're hearing this, right? They keep going, brother. Verse 38. And the covenant, covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget. Neither shall ye fear other powers. Verse 39, but the most high your power ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. And here it is, check this out, go ahead, brother. Verse 40, how be it, how they, be it? How be it they did not hearken, but they did after their former Manner. They did after their former manner. Go ahead, brother. Verse 41. So these nations feared the Most High, and they served their graven image, both their children and their children's children, as did their father. So do they unto this day. And here we are today. And here we are today. Because they thought they had to fear the Most High through those gods. Just like we have when we're at Anybody that had a walk and in, in tried to uh, look for the Most High or had some understanding and are, is being talked to and taught wrong and, and taught out of order because we just want to accept what's going on and accept it. How be it? They did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So they just stayed right where they were at, even though they were told this. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children. And there's children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. So do they unto this day. And that's where we're at. And these gods, we're going we're gonna to read about them. Go ahead, brother. Sukkut Benuth. Sukkut Benuth, or Sukkut Benuth, was a Babylonian deity. One of the deities brought to the former kingdom of Samaria by the men of Israel after the exile of Canaan by Assyria. By who? Assyria. By who? Assyria. No, by the men of Israel. They were brought to the former kingdom of Samaria by the men of Israel after the exile of Canaan by Assyria. Go ahead, brother. According to the Talmud, Sakut Benu was represented with a hen and her chicks thus associating this God with the astrological constellation Pleiades. And we're not going to like, we're just going to keep going. Go ahead, brother, go to the next one. We're going to go to this next description of this God that our forefathers worked with and we're not. So we're, we're getting these names, we're getting these understandings because what's going to happen is we're going to have to be able to, under, to speak about what's going on today. We have to understand what's going on today, whether it's our co-workers or whatever it is, because they'll rather hear something about these Greek gods, they'll rather hear something about these other gods than hear about a higher. But you gotta get this understanding because you're, we're gonna, always gonna run into somebody that's gonna wanna discuss this. We're gonna run into people, we have to break it down in the milk all the time. But there's gonna be people, the Father wants us to know these things. The elders want us to know, uh, want us to know these things. So, let's go, brother. Nergal, Nergal, the theophoric element found in the personal name of Nergal Sherezizer. It be lo located in Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 3 and 13. He was the power of pestilence, disease, and various calamities who could be appeased by incantation. Cantations. He was worshipped with corn soap, 
Harish Kigal, a cult center of Qatar, northeast of Babylon. Temples at various other sites, Larsa, Isin, Ashur, were dedicated to him. Nagal was worshipped by the men of Kut and being settled in the province of Samaria by the Assyrians. And the precepts for those are going to be, uh, now the precepts for that one is going to be 2 Kings 17 and 30. And you'll be able to reference that to this guy that's in scripture. And there's one more. I think there's a couple more. Ashima. Ashima was a West Semitic goddess of faith. These are all on Wikipedia too. So if you want to look them up, you can have it. But basically, we're, we're, we're having these gods so you'll know. Like, there are other gods. If they ask you, like, he says in Scripture, there are other gods. Yes, there are other gods. Here. Go ahead, brother. Ashima was a West Semitic goddess of faith related to the Arcadian goddess Shem, Shem, Shemti to fate who was a goddess in her own right, but also a title of other goddesses such as Dakina and Ishtar. Dakina, for example, was titled Banat Shimti, creator of fate. Nabaz. Nabaz was a deity of Aven during the time of Shalmaneser, precept of 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 31. Some indications of worship have been found in Syria between Bertus and Tripolis in form of a dog, a contention first found in the Talu. Other identified Nabaz as a Persian god, Inakhaza, or even with the Babylonian Nabu. Those who understand Nabaz as being related to dogs, tied to the Egyptian deity and Anubis. Uh, just, re just read the next one, the title of the next one, and then when you get to the, uh, the last two, we can read those. Um, yeah, that's just the name of one. We're not going to read what they're tied to, what guys are tied to, whatever it is, but we'll, we'll get to this, this next one. Adramalek. Like many pagan gods, Adramalek is considered a demon in some Judeo-Christian tradition. Judeo-Christian Judeo tradition. So he appears in Milton's Paradise Lost, where he is a fallen angel who, among with Amadeus is vanquished by Uriel and Raphael. According to Cullen D. Plancy's book on demonology, Infernal Dictionary, Adrenaline. So you're gonna look at this too because they start having an order. Because we know the fallen angels teach order like how they're gonna control things. Go ahead, brother. Adramalek became the president of the Senate of the Demons. He is also a chancellor of hell and supervisor of Satan's wardrobe. Supervisor of Satan's wardrobe. What kind of crazy I mean, this is just, you have a president, you have a Senate, you have a chancellor of hell, so they're making things that can order like what's going on in the world now. These are these gods, and they're teaching it how to run it, and these are these spirits. Go ahead, brother. So this, so when they always talk about how they get control and how they're getting, um, like if they're not doing being in order, they put them out the way. Go ahead, brother. He is generally depicted with a human torso, a mule's head, a peacock tail, and the limbs of a mule or peacock. And then there was an anamalek. Anamalek, that's close enough. According to the Hebrew Bible, was a Syrian and Mesopotamian goddess who worshipped alongside Adramalek. She is a lunar deity and is said to have been worshipped as Seth Farvanim 
an Assyrian town. She is possibly the daughter of Anu, as her name means Anu is king. All right, yeah, so that's enough with the name and off these gods. So we'll know, like, when it says gods in the Bible, and they're going to ask, and they're going to talk, and you can tell them, yes, there are gods, and there are other gods, and yes, they were worshipped, and yes, we worship them, and yes, we still fear the Father, and yes, this is where we're at right now. And yes, in our ignorance, we did it before, but no, we're not anymore. Because they're going to ask you, oh, you don't do Christmas? Oh, you don't, what? Like, when we start maintaining in this walk, we're not even going to be talking about this time of the year. It won't even be, we don't even consider it this time of the year anymore. It's just going to be another day. The more we maintain this walk, it ain't going to be a Christmas year or this part of the year. It won't be that at all. It won't be that at all because generationally, the way the body's going, the church is going, and the children are going, that's going to go away too. That's going to go away too. Go ahead, brother. In the 8th century BC, the Most High exiled the Northern Kingdom out of the land of Canaan. And at the same time, the Southern Kingdom was under the captivity of the Babylonian Assyrian Empire. With Israel no longer in the land the Most High promised them, the Gentiles came into the land and brought their gods along with the practices and customs of their gods. The antediluvian gods were flourishing post-flood, and like Enoch told us, the angels taking many forms would deceive mankind into serving their Nephilim children, the demons, as gods. So, the antediluvian gods are still operating, and, and they're gonna ask you, um, you'll get this question too, like, um, these demons are taking other forms. And we're gonna to get to these scriptures and it shows that, yeah, we have, you know, being angels unawares and just gonna be saved in the scriptures. So when Raphael and Uriel are doing their work, we don't know. We don't know, but we, we gotta be there, we gotta be doing our job. When we have a report to the end of the day to the most side, we gotta be doing our job because our angels reporting on us. We do gotta be doing our job. Because they're doing theirs. So let's go to let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 63. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 63. And it shall come to pass that as the most high rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you. So the Most High will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land where the thou goest to possess it. So he's not, we're not being told lightly like we know this, it because we're living it. It's, it's um, you know, when you look at the back and forth of the scripture from the Old Testament, New Testament, a person's gonna, you know, gonna look at you, they're gonna be like, you're an Israelite, you know, this and that, and we're right, it's like, well, as an Israelite, this is how I look at this day. So today when I was getting these texts about Merry Christmas and all these things like that, I was like, as an Israelite, I will say that I hope, I pray that you are blessed and the Father bless and protect you. And another day we can talk. No Merry, I ain't giving no response to the Merry Christmas. I ain't giving no response to that. Let that do its work. Let that be enough. Because we don't want to strive with it. We're not going to get no spirit on us. We're not going to go on a phone and a rant argument, uh, text communications back and forth. Text get taken out of order. Don't know what's going to happen. Just keep it simple with them. Because that's where they're at right now, keeping it simple. Because they're in this cloud, in this haze of it. So that's why, you know, hey, you know, we're over here by Thea's house, you know, one of my aunts, we're, we're over here doing this. I'm like, look. Tell the family I love them, and, and uh, you know, I hope the Father bless them and keep them. And another day, hopefully the God's will, God willing, we'll sit down and break bread another day. But I'm not going to make it. And that's it. 
But let it be. And let the Spirit do the work. Let the Most High do that work and have it. So we don't have to strive to get all, you know, so and so is in town, you're never going to see them. They're never here, this is that. It's done. It's done. Go ahead, brother. Verse 64. And the Most High shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there, shall, and there thou shalt serve other powers, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Yeah, and we, and we know we're definitely there. We definitely we were there. And, and, and here's the thing about it too, like, some of us didn't serve nothing. Some of us didn't even, you know, we were so far away from the Most High, we didn't even have no um, outlook or thoughts about a God. We're so far in the world. They didn't have to bother with us. We were busy destroying ourselves. We were busy destroying ourselves. And when we were being called, and when someone was being, you know, uh, most of us trying to work at us, we'd shut up, ignore them. We bought into the, I'm not a bad person, and I wish you well, but I can't hear you. I can't, you know, I can't be about what you're talking about. We did all that too. We proliferated that spirit too, the ignorant spirit. We did that too. So when we deal with other people at work or our family, we can't, we can't forget what shoes we were in not too long ago. We really can't. And that just happens. And that's where that long patience, long suffering comes in. We just gotta just hold on. We just gotta hold on. And also too, and we'll do this too, like our brothers and sisters that are young in the body right now, that are recently baptized brothers and sisters, Imagine when we, where you were at with your family and the times you had to deal with it, where they're at now. So, you know, talking to them today or calling them today will be some good work because they got to be battling. They got to be getting calls from the brothers and sisters, like, you know, and they got to be thinking about it. It's got to be on them. Where's their strength? Where's our body at? We got to do that. That's part of our work, brothers and sisters. We got to do that. So that's just a part of it. And we know, you know, single brothers, single sisters, half the family's there, the brothers in the halfway, this and that. This is part of the work. It's an all day thing today that, that, you know, that happens. They're battling all the way to the end. And that spirit's working itself all the way to the end of this night. All right, brother, let's go to, let's go to Luke. Chapter 16, verse 13. And this, we caught up like, where we got to the last, we'll not get to the end of it, so there's gonna be more, it's gonna, it's gonna talk about um, serving and how we're supposed to be in honor with the Father and straighten our head. Now where we're at right now, right? Where we're at right now. So we can't be fooling ourselves. And I was talking to about today, so we can't fool ourselves with this understanding like, ah, oh, okay, I don't keep Christmas. And I'm with the Most High, so I already defeated Christmas. Personally, I've done defeated Christmas in that spirit. No, we can't be doing that. We can't look at it like that. We gotta ask the Father for help. Like, oh, how, how can you say you, you already bowed, you already, you know, took the rounds of it and, and took care of it? Nah, no. Just because we're not doing that and we're not putting the lights up, we're not buying the gifts and all these other things like that, we still have to look at that battle. We can't be falling asleep to this battle because Satan is sneaky. It's real creative. Go ahead, brother. It's kind of like a friend of mine in different program who say that our addictions in the parking lot are pushers, waiting to take us over. It, like. it is that. It's a spirit. They didn't equate it to spirit. That's what that program was about. They had not had to give the understanding, you know, to the most high, you know. But now you're a brother, you're getting it. You're do with the most high. We do with him. And we see that um, you know, things that'll have to be happening to our family, but not gonna equate it to the most high. It won't be equated to him. They'll equate it to luck. They'll equate it to this. They'll take they'll equate it to uh, Friday the thirteenth. And all this other thing. 
So if you could have an understanding of Friday the 13th, if you could have an uh, understanding to the Christmas spirit, how can, you, how can you not accept this spirit and understand that this is going on and there's other gods going on? But that's where we get the conversation and talking to them, you know, we can understand it. So you can equate it to, you know, look at the, the signs that are out there, wines and spirits and get in the Christmas spirit. And that's where we can base the conversation and talk to them. Because if we go straight to the precepts on them, they're going to be like, what? If you went to straight to the precepts on me like back then, I'd be like, what? Is this the part of it? And it's a two-way thing because you learn when you're working with that individual or whatever, every scenario is going to be different. You learn. And you get better at it. And you ask the Father to help. Like when you're about to start with something, you just ask him to please help me out. It don't matter if it's a member of our own body or not, not in our body. We ask the Father to help to, to speak correctly you know, and to have, have the thoughts be done you know, correctly in order with the Father to help out with his guidance and wisdom. Where we at? Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he hate the one and love the other, or either he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. So we understand this precept, right? So we're gonna, you know, when somebody asks us these questions about, you know, why we wanna have anything to do with it, we can, we can go here, if we have a person that has some scripture-based knowledge. But we're still going to keep it on us to hold our, maintain our line for ourselves. I can't do that. It's for us too. All the time it's for us. Even though we get the understanding, it's like, I can't serve God in righteousness. There's, it just don't work. There's just no way. It don't work. And further down, we'll get into it, into the lesson. And we're getting, this lesson is going to roll into today, the Chris myth of Chris myth. It's what it is, but there's another precept that backs that up. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Most High and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Most High's table and of the table of devils. Verse 22, do we provoke the Most High to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? That's how we're going back with the thoughts of, let me serve these idols and still fear me, Father. Do we provoke the Most High to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Like we can have it with him and make a deal with him and make, a, make some kind of a, a deal with the Father. And that happens where in the world, you could ask them, like, and they'll be like, well, I pray, but nothing ever happens. Which God are you praying to? Which God are you praying to? Do you know which God you're praying to? Oh, yeah, I understand. Okay. Let's understand that it says in Scripture, there are other gods. Which one are you praying to? What does this, what does this God say to do? Offer my kids. I could be wicked. Well, what was Ohio say? Got these 10 standards of commandments plus this, the law, statute, commandment. All of this is what the Father says. And let's see what else is tied in with what Ohio says. That's where we go with it. Yeah, you can have these other gods, and that's just where you're at. Will your God give you or, or hold you or, or try to do something for you or whatever it is and teach you something wicked or let you stay wicked? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Psalms chapter 86, verse 5. Psalms chapter 86, verse 5. For thou, the Most High, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. When you call upon the Most High, so you can show them like, okay, this is what the Most High says is gonna happen. When you, when you're God, this is what you get. This is what you get with the Most High. Just like that earlier when we read, a soldier, and ask your God if I do this, he'll be okay with me. Go ahead, brother. Verse six, give ear, O Most High, unto my prayer, 
and attend to the voice of my supplications. Verse 7, in the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Our God will. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, among the powers, there is none like unto thee. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Most High. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. Because you can't go back in Scripture and show who took somebody out of Israel. You can go back and look what our God did. Look at all the works that our God did. Where are the works of your God built in stone and wood and everything else? Where's that at? Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, all nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before me, O Most High, and shall glorify thy name. Verse 10, for thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Verse 11, teach me the way, O Most High. I will walk in thy truth, Unite my heart to fear thy name. Verse 12, I will praise thee, O most, most high, my power, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name, thy name forevermore. Verse 13, for great is thy mercy unto me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Now, you can go there and be like, which God tells you that he's going to deliver you from hell? Which one of those gods says is going to do that? Like, we got to do common sense talking to him. We can go to precepts, but you got to give the common sense too. What does your God tell you? Is he going to deliver you from hell? Or is he going to be, you going to roll down a widow or going to be with him? What's it going to be? Because precept wise, when you talk to them and then you go there and show them that, they'll be like, oh. But then Satan's going to come in and try to make something happen to break up your conversation. You've got to be ready for that too. This is going to happen. Satan's going to send something or i got to go. i got to make this phone call. i got to, you know, it just happens. But you did your job, right? And a report's going to be done. We just gotta, that's just a part of it. Go ahead, brother. We'll go to the commentary. Part of our curse would be that the Most High would uproot us out of our land and scatter us to the four corners of the earth to serve the wood and stone idol powers of Gentiles. We have been groomed in the ways of these powers and not the ways of the Most High. There is more to come on the subject as we are just scratching the surface when it comes to the powers of the nations being idle. So, when the elders bring out more of this information, we'll be able to get that understanding and start thinking about how we're going to bring this. How we're going to bring it to them to understand these gods. We're not getting these names just for nothing. We're going to be like, yeah, there's other gods. And look what my God, our God, the higher this God that I follow as it is like, not in this day that you want to follow December 25th, not on the days or any other days that you want. We do have holy days that we honor. But this is what our God tells us to follow. We've got to get an understanding like there are other gods. Like they don't want to hear that. We all, there's only one God. It's all follow the same God. No. No. Why does the scripture say that? Does it get taught? And yet, in, uh, man, I'm t I've never heard it. I did the catechism, I did the, you know, the uh, Catholic school raising, never heard it, never heard it, but was taught to pray to those different days that I was taught blindly in ignorance to follow that and do that in order. Go ahead, brother. More than ever. It is important that we study to show ourselves approved. Receive the baptism of Yeshua while continuing to stay cleansed by the word 
so we can make certain that we are complying with the ways of the Most High, serving Him and not the ways of pagan powers serving them. All right. So that's kind of where the last of that lesson was wrapping up. And now we're going to get into how today, this unholy day that is being kept, Chris Smith, that we took part in error, we did it before. Now I know the scriptures, erring in knowledge, lack of knowledge, or we can now look at the scriptures and uh, not do this anymore, and also teach them not to do it anymore. But when we go to the scriptures, it's like, We'll go to, we're going to go to Jeremiah, we're going to go to Isaiah, we're going to go to the, you know, Jeremiah 10, we're going to go to those that, you know, describe everything that's going on today, we can have that, we get that, you know, understanding, and um, the day of today, and, you know, and teach that to people and try to talk to them about it, right, so, if you go straight through the scriptures, if you went straight through the scriptures to me, like I said earlier today, and I was talking, they have a couple minutes of trying to get at me, I would never stay, it would never stay in my mind. It would never stay in my mind because I don't equate, I never had to equate the scripture in the book, this book that was given for us to keep, it never added up. And this is the way I had to get it. As a Catholic, and you can look it up online, they have certain, it's called a miscellet, it's a book, and it goes by month. And in the Missalette, it's taught like this. You get a first reading, a second reading, and a gospel. And the first reading can be one of the other you know, books, Isaiah, they'll go into one of those ones. The second reading, they'll go to Psalms and Proverbs. The third reading is the gospel. The third reading is the one that the teacher or the priest will try to talk about, will try to teach about. And I don't remember nothing clicking with that third reading where I get taught nothing. So, what do we do? What, how, do how do we speak to get understanding to people? There's videos out there, and they'll go straight to the scriptures, and they'll show the graphics and the pictures and stuff like that. And you can, you know, we can we can send those links to people, and they'll they'll get them. You know, let me show you this, let me give you that. And those those work. Those videos because you gotta have visuals. Cause we like to have visuals and stuff like that. So, it really comes down to. Um, like listening to what they're saying, let them talk. Let them speak about it. So, yeah, if you go, you know, we'll, we'll go back to the scriptures, but let's, let's, let's talk about this, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the parts of this unholy day, the 25th. When they say they celebrate because it's the birth of Christ, of Jesus, of Christ. So, what do we do? Okay, where's that in the scripture? How do we know it's the 25th? What, is it, what does it mean? How, does that, how do you know that's the, the birth of Christ? Can you show me? I'm not, and don't be all like, you know, let me show you, you know. Nah, I mean, I get it. I just don't do it anymore because I just don't, I haven't found it anywhere. Can you show me? Where's the birth of Christ at? Where does it say it's the 25th? Uh, how does that happen? How does that work? And we're gonna, and I'm gonna go through these. We're gonna go through you know, quite a few of them, and you're gonna have your thoughts on them too, because you're gonna be thinking about them too. Because these are just ones that just like came right away. You know, we can go to the tree with Jeremiah ten. We can go to movies. We can go to mistletoe and know it goes back to you know pagan paganism is shown, and there's links that we just, you know that to talk about the paganism is the mistletoe, the paganism of the reeds, the paganism of the gifts, and then when they say, well, Christmas is for children. Where's that in the scriptures? Well, Christ was born as a baby, this that, okay. But you're talking about the children. So what we're, 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 we're talking about, we're talking about this is, is milk. We've got to deal with like straight up milk. And I'm talking about like milk where they ain't even had milk. That's where I was at, that's what I'm talking about. Like blind too, don't even want to get no milk. Don't even want to be having no milk. That's where this day gets broken down. The gluttonous of the food and, and you know, eating like crazy for what? 
How is, how is the blood eating all that food and all that coming to Christ being born, if that's what you're saying? I can show you, we can show you again where that gluttonous spirit is where it is, you know, in the pagan ways. Um, the finances, the movie's like, okay, so let's go, let's get this one. So that movie, A Christmas Carol, right? Um, the one with Scrooge? You remember? Pretty much everybody knows that one, right? So check this out. What did he call Christmas in the movie? He called it a humbug, right? Did anybody ever think to understand what that word meant? Check it out. This is what humbug means. It's a definition in Webster's Dictionary. Definition of a humbug, this is one of entry of two. Something designed to deceive and mislead. A willfully false, deceptive, or insincere person. Watch, there it is. An attitude or spirit of pretense and deception. Just the Webster's. And then, you know, the British made it to a, a usually, a hard, usually permanent flavored candy or something like that. So guess what that candy is? That little red one with the stripes and all that? Peppermint candy, yeah. Yep, the candy cane, yep. Yeah. Put it in our face and nobody will question nothing, right? We're just cool with the movies and cool with, you know, laying back with it and... So, a discussion point with, you know, who we were trying to talk to about. Uh, you watch, oh yeah, watch all the movies and um, what's the other one? Uh, the little drummer boy. What does that have to do with Christ? How does that even fit in? Because you can ask him, what's your favorite, you know? What was it? Snoopy and the Peanuts? You know, what was it? Um, White Christmas? Miracle on 34th Street? There was an angel involved? Well, how did that happen? What? But where's Christ at with that? And it's going to be like little things like this we're going to have to work on. It's just going to be like that. It's just going to be little things like that. You know? Um, the three wise men. How you know it's three? Where does it say that? At? And let I me mean, not get like with that attitude right away. Like, oh, you show me where's that at? Well, okay, well, three wise men. I say, so, okay, what wisdom? Wisdom is involved. I'm with this. What's up? Let me know. What's up. I want to learn something. Where's that? Where's that? How's that work? So when you get down to speaking with them and you remove all those things away, or if you just move those basics, then you're like, okay, so now where's Christmas at now? Where's it at now? Now we can go to the precepts. And now we can go to, let's get it out, Jeremiah 10, 1 and 5. Now we can talk to them like, look, I appreciate you know this, this discussion, but can we talk some more? Can we can we get some you know talk about you know what it says in the scripture? And I don't know if you get it. I don't know if you get it in your first reading, or your second reading, or in your gospel reading. But if they're going to talk about Jeremiah, if they're going to talk about Isaiah, well, let's talk about this part. Go ahead, brother. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Most High speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Verse 2. Thou says the Most High, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Yeah, you don't have to look at the sky, you don't have to look at all the stars, you don't have to look at all that, that that ain't for us. That's not for us. And the other thing too is if they go with this one, oh, that's for the Jews. That's, that's for Jewish people. Okay, um, so what was Christ? He was an Israelite. He was a Jew. If you 
want to be like Christ and follow Christ, how does that, where does it work? Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of a workman with the axe. Verse 4. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Well, I know that Christ's father was a carpenter, but I don't get nothing with that here. If anybody would know how to do workmanship, so how does that work? Yo. Go ahead, buddy. Verse 5, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Yeah, it's, it's a God. It's not the God of the Most High. No. Well, let's go to uh, present that with Isaiah. Chapter 40, verse 18. Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 18. To whom then will ye be be likened God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melted a graven image, and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast its silver chain. And we know how that happened. If they want to go to, you know, the movie. They like to go to all these movies and watch these movies where, you know, the molten gold and calf and Moses. Yeah, we get it. But we, you can show that, yo, we didn't follow him either. But it says that we would, and you can show him that. And that if he returned, he would be with us. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20. He that is, all, he that is so impoverished. You don't even have nothing. You don't know how to even work with a lot that he has no oblation, chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Yeah. Again, we've already, you've already gotten past the point of asking and clearing these things up or asking them and you know what's going to happen. I got to go. Um, okay, I get what you're saying. So we still got to do our work. We still got to do our job to uh, speak to them about it, right? We still got to uh, work on it because in the end of the day, when we, when we do start getting this conversation, whether it's our family, our coworkers, whatever, while we're doing this, we're still be praying to the Father, asking for help, like in the beginning. As soon as you start that conversation, we're like, help me, Father. Help me. Help me, Father, to, to get this in correct order because you're going to know he's going to do it. Because it says in the scripture, like, you know, if you don't, if the Holy Spirit is like, if you don't read me and know me, I can't help you. That's where the study part comes in. Then she'll come to me, all right, we got you, we help you out here. This is what I got you at. I'll get you, let me help you here. Then when you do end it, you're at the end of the day, you check with the Father again, like, okay, Father, Help me out, like did, you know, everything worked out. Hopefully, in your name, for your glory, your glory, this worked out right. Not for gathering Christ Church glory, not for any elder or deacon or yourselves glory, for the Most High. That's where that's where we get it at. Not, you know. And the elders, you know, we know we're not like that. That's nothing like that because, you know, the elders give it out to anybody. It's told to anybody. They'll tell it to anybody. And that's how we are, too. Like, hey, here, we don't have the answers. We got an elders. We got deacons. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, uh, verse 8. 
Galatians chapter 4, verse 8. How be it then when you knew not the Most High? So we got to remember us in this time. Go ahead, brother. Ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Verse 9. But now, after that ye have known the Most High, or rather I have known of the Most High, how turn ye again to the weak and beggary elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. So he can show like, hey, it happened in the Old Testament, it happened in the New Testament, and it's still happening now. Weak and beggar, beggarly elements. So there can be others, Old Testament, it's like, oh, hold up. It's still happening then, it's still happening now. There are other gods that are still being worshipped and honored and kept. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10, ye observe days and months and times and years. All right. So, speaking for myself, speaking as a former Catholic, we're not going to know these scriptures, so getting that backdrop of trying to understand what they will, we've been through with years, like, all right, you've been celebrating Christmas for all these years, what's up with the tree? How does it work? You know, so we go through these scriptures and hopefully, if they have an ear to hear, they'll hear and they're seeking truth. And it'll happen. And it, and, it, and it isn't like you, we would think like, oh, we're gonna have like all kinds of people listening, it's gonna happen, no. Because by patience, just that one is the one you're supposed to give it to and it'll be the one to have, you know, give it to. You still just gotta keep giving, planting that seed because it, you, you just don't know, and it'll just be that one. And it don't have to be some of your family, it could be your coworker, it could be, you know, the, the spirit, they'll be calling you, like, they'll be checking in with you. It'll happen. And let's go to, well, the other thing too is this. If that conversation stops, it's because they're happy with being where they're at, and that can happen too, and they don't want to hear it. Because why? And you can tell them why because we're stiff-necked people. And we'll be told that. And you can smile and be good with it and be like, yep. Yeah. Because it happens. And, and you gotta just look at it and be like, okay, what do I do? Cut them off, be no good with them? Nah, man. We still have to maintain our walk because they're gonna keep looking at us. You know, the, the more we are with the Father, the more we have order with Him, the more we walk upright as we're supposed to, it's going to show. It's going to show. But if they're willing to hear more, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Dude, this is a precept that was, uh, sorry, Doc, in the earlier part of the lesson. Um, that was brought up by the elders. De Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 to 32. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 29. When the Most High thy power shall cut off the nations before thee, whether thou goest to possess them. Now you can tell them this. We read that when we first started this, you know, the lesson. Now we can go there. And thou succeeded them and dwelleth in their land. Verse 30, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their powers, saying, how did these nations serve their powers? Even so, I will do likewise. So For don't go trying to figure their gods out. That's what we're with, like we read this earlier. Go ahead, brother. Verse 31, thou shalt not do so unto the most high thy power, 
for every abomination to the Most High, which he hated, had, he, had they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burned in the fire to their gods. Verse 32. That's it, brother. That's good. No, go ahead, go ahead, finish that. Yeah, you finish that. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So what do we do? We go, we, we just talked about gods. We just talked about the errors of the Christmas part of it. We're like, well, who teaches? Who, who's the one that's supposed to teach us? Who was the one that always corrected us? Who was the one that, that gave us the understanding? Who had to come back and straighten it out? Yeshia. Yeshia. Our brother. An Israelite. Taught us to look at all our errors and correct them. And you can go back and you can show it, you know, the, the different scriptures with the, uh, the Pharisees and how he was, they came at him. And we can, t we can talk about it, like if they're at that point, which we're probably looking at a different conversation with them now because this is going to be some, a lot of talking and listening at this point. But let's go to John chapter 4, verse 21. John chapter 4, verse 21. Go ahead. Yeshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour coming when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22. Ye worship, ye know, know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So, if we back that up and understand who this sister is, you know, that she was at the well, and that the apostles were looking at him like, you know, what are you going to talk to this? She's not of us, she's not with us, she's a um, Samaritan woman. And this is what Christ is telling her. You know, you worship, you know not what, like we do now, what we're doing. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So when they're gonna to talk to me like, Christ is a Jew? Yes, he's a Jew. He's an Israelite. So if you want to follow Christ, understand who, who Christ is, because that don't get taught either. It does not get taught. I have never heard that in the catechism or nothing. Never. It never got taught. Keep going, brother. Verse 23. But the hour come, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24. The Most High is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if they want to understand, they look at the spirit of Christmas, or wine and spirits, and they're, they're okay to understand that. You can definitely show them this. This God is a spirit. What spirit are you working with? What God are you working with? Let's go to Mark chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, has Esaias e e e prophesied of you hypocrites? As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Verse 7, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of the Most High, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such things ye do. So if we back it up, 
How be it in vain do they worship you, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men? We're going to look at that and you'll be like, okay, now you know there's other gods. How, did, how do we worship them? How did you know to do this? How do we know not to be in order? What is this God that we're worshiping in these other churches? What is this God that's a stone that they worship? We gotta back it up to like real simple terms to understanding it. Real simple terms to understand. Real real terms to understand it because going any further in the scripture or precepting it further to them is not gonna is, is not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Where are we at on this up? Where were you at? Oh, actually, just pick it up at eight, brother. Pick it up at eight. For laying aside the commandment of the Most High, you hold the tradition of men. So what is it? You can tell them. Because you're not definitely following the Most High. It is nothing of the Most High, whatever's going on. It's a way, it's, you're just basically putting them to the side and be like, I'm going to follow him the way I want to follow him. This God, I could work with this God. Go do my 45 minutes with them, and I'm out. And I'm good. That's about, it's about the timeline of a, of a mass for a, it's scheduled for an hour, but it'll never go an hour. And, 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 and on top of that, you'll be told like, uh, we'll probably, I'll probably get you, try to get you out of here early. Yeah. And it becomes a spirit because not only do you want to get out of there, you just want to do your little hour and make your donation and take, do the tithes. But when you get to the parking lot too, it's even crazy too because they're trying to smash and hurry up and get out too. And Harry can go to, you know, whatever, go to the bar, watch the football game, be in a hurry. Just run out, be gone, just hurry up. And many other such things like you do. Go ahead, brother. Where are we at? Go ahead on. As the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you do. Verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well you rejected the commandment of the Most High. So there's no way you're keeping the commandment of the Most High if you're acting like this. There's no way. You don't fear him. You don't honor him. You're not looking for him. And you don't definitely understand him. No, there ain't no way. You're not walking up right. You're not teaching your children right. There's nothing like that going on. There's no way. Go ahead, brother. That ye may keep your own tradition. Yeah, but you can keep your own tradition and keep that one rolling. Definitely. So, getting this understanding. And knowing in this, this so-called Christmas, like I said, time of the year, we're trying to reach out. We're getting all these phone calls from our family. We're getting all these calls from all the, um, different members that are saying, you know, Mary, whatever, have a you know, good day, blah, blah, blah. Again, like I said earlier, we definitely got to keep track of where our young members in the body are, the baptized members are, because we got two years in, three years in where we're at. They're like, I don't know, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be straight with you. I got calls today, like, I'm struggling today. I got the calls. I am struggling, brother, I need help. They were texting me, calling me, I'm like, call me, call me. Don't text me, call me. I was getting it. And I put the down, man, this never, I was like, all right, all right. Satan's attacking because he knows what's going on with this body, this church and gather Christ's church as a whole, and the Israelites as a whole. And this spirit that's working, man, they, they know this spirit is very strong. This, this, and Aki talked about it a lot, was that the time, the time about the sisters, how hard it is on them, man. It's a heavy spirit on the sisters because they're used to that. And you know, and, and they all brought it up about the family. Like, yeah, we love our family, and yeah, we're gonna 
that's our blood and our family. We understand that, man. And, and where we're at with the Most High, we're like, yo, we fear the Most High. We're on Him first before you, before my mother, before my father. But we still have to honor them. And, and, and where is that? Finish that. Go back down to the next to verse, brother. Verse 10. Yeah, Mark. Yep. Mark 7 and 10. Mark 7 and 10. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoever so curses father or mother, let him die the death. So, you got to honor them no matter what. No matter what's going on. And if you think about that too, it's your brothers, it's your sisters. We can't have nothing with no animosity, none, nothing about that. We have to be able to tell them, yeah, we love them. And pray the most high to make a way that opportunity will come that you can, you know, have time with them or have a meal with them or break bread with them or have whatever happen, you know, to show them that I love you. That's not the situation. You want to call me, you know, a, a Bible maniac or, you know, whatever, however you want to say it, or you're into the Bible too much, whatever. I was like, hold up. What God are you serving then? Because my God tells me to study to show myself approved. What does your God say? And if you don't get it from your teacher, if you don't want to know him, I get it. I get it, because the world has them so hard. Really, really hard. To the point where they're thinking about, you know, how they're gonna pay something months from now that they already just have for one day. The finance part of it. And they don't even care, like, I didn't even know, like, um, the point set us, that plant, I didn't even know that came from Mexico. I didn't even know that was a part of I was researching. I was like, oh man, I'm just leave that one there where it's at. That's all I needed to know. I was like, oh, I'm good. Because back in the day, that was like a gift that I would give in the ignorance. And made trips to get a real tree instead of having a false tree in the house. Yeah, yeah, I know, we're gonna have the real one. Oh no, we go, I'm holding it down right. I hold my hold. And some of you feel like, so what's, how's this, you know, what does the tree have to do with Christ? I'm like, man, it would have been the other part that comes out with our idols in Chicago. Man, I just spent 80 bucks on this tree. It's definitely going up now. The same thing how we do with the crosses and all the stuff with the medallions, all oh, spent mad on gold and all these things to have these idols made on gold and big ones and well and everybody looked at them too with the big Virgin Mary and all these crosses and all this stuff like that. And it was just like Yeah. But um let's finish it up. Let's go to uh this will be the last precept now. Well, this will be yeah, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. So they're going to be like, what God? Those gods are in... That's Old Testament stuff. That's Old Testament stuff that you're talking about. That, that's, that don't apply now. When, they, when we start talking about guys, like you're saying, brother, says we gotta be able to go to these points and show it. Go ahead, brother. In what concord does Yeshua with B-L-I? How, how does Christ concord, concord with Belial, this guy, how do they work together? How do you put that tree with Christ? 
How do you put that wreath with Christ? How do you put that Hollywood with Christ? How do you put those movies with Christ? How does a drummer boy go with Christ? And I know uh, that was my that was mine too. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, that was mine too. Uh, the drum the drummer boy used to get me. <laughs> I know. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> the mistletoe, the kissing of the mistletoe, that's some other wicked stuff too. That's some other stuff too, yeah. That's the only thing you got. That's the one that got you out? Yeah, because you know why? Because it put a spirit of wickedness on us to take advantage. That's why. But it was both female and male. Female and male. The flesh. The weakness of the flesh. Yep. Go ahead, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. 15. Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? So somebody who don't even believe, how does Christ go with that? How does that work with him? Don't even believe, don't even want to, don't even worry about it. And believe me, I understand that part of it too. Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of the Most High with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As the Most High has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their power, and they shall be my people. Verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate says the, the, the most high. So that's why I'm not going to have a tree anymore. That's why I'm not buying any of those things anymore. That's why I don't have no lights anymore. That's why my house is not going to have that anymore. And that's why I can't partake in this meal or this dinner or what you're saying is probably not that I don't love you. But where's Christ with that? And where's the most high with that? on this day that's being kept that we err not knowing the scriptures we did before, but not anymore now, where we're at now. Can't do it, but I do love you, and you know, I do have to honor my mother and my father, and I have to love, you know, you, but um, I can't do it. Go ahead, brother. Says the Most High, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse 18. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Most High. And you will be my sons and daughters. This is for both of us, so they're not going to be like, he works to be our father, or actually, he is our father, and we work to be his sons and daughters. We work to be his sons and daughters. It just doesn't you know, they think automatically I'm his son and his daughter. But what are you a son and daughter to who? To what God are you a son and daughter to? So getting into the, the gods of the nations or idols, I mean, it was just like, okay, I'm gonna take that and go into this, this day that we know it's wicked now, but we know it's a, man, it's a heavy cloud that's on our people. And how we can look at it now and be like, wow. How, you know, how um, caught up I was with this to this day. And man, I know a lot of people like that. Was, they, all, a lot of us, you know, everybody has their favorite one. Christmas is my one. I like to fold this lie. I like to blow things up or whatever it is. And how, everybody got their face. Yeah, everybody got their favorite one. Ready for it in the year. But if you look at us as a body, as, as a people, like we have our own, like the Israelites, we have our own holidays. And by our members, and we have them, we have to show them like, oh, it's through the most high. We, we were first with him to have all this. He gave us, we have more holidays and holidays with the Father than the world does. Way more.
Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I don't want to go into backing up with revelations and going back into, you know, going into different precepts where, you know. So I, that last part of it, that wasn't part of the lesson from the elders. So the last commentary was the last part. And then getting into the part where you know, the Christmas crowd, the humble, the breeze, the wise men. I tried to, you know, I asked the fathers, you know, we gotta look at this in a plain view, because that's where they're at. That's where I was at, in a plain view of it, without the precepts involved, to show, like, how does it add up? How does it work? But, um, you have questions? Comments? Oh, man. I, um, the um, Isaiah 40 and um, 18 you went to, yeah. started um, verse 17. I just wanted to um, go a little bit in more detail. Um, verse 17 says, it said, all the nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So now he's gonna say what they do. It said, to whom then will ye liken God? So who are you comparing, or who are you trying to make equal to, to me, he's saying? Come. Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? So now he's gonna say what they're doing. And this is what we gotta tell our, our, our mothers and fathers of, and our people that are, that just don't get it. Um, it's saying the workmen melt a graven image, and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast cast of silver chains. Now you know what they do, what they did over the years is even like right now he's saying they got regular chains and they did all they did was gold plated them and silver plated them. The more money you had, you probably could have had pure gold chains, pure silver, and wrapped it around that tree. But as we go down here, it said, he that is so impoverished. So over the years, you know, and they knew we became more impoverished, you can go to stores and get the little streamers and go around the tree. So this was all a setup for Israel to, to actually keep these idols because the other nations, the other nations, had pure gold item, pure silver items, you know, and all this is what they taught us. And it said, he that is so impoverished, he hath no oblation. So he has none of them gold and silver items erected up like the other nations had. And it says, so he chooses a tree that will not rot, he seeketh unto him cunning workmen to prepare a graven image. It shall not be moved. It said, have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Have it not been told you from the beginning? What the Most High said in the beginning? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Come. Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? So can we go to Isaiah 41 and 7? It says, so the carpenter, and this is something that we really have to touch, show our family that these guys have these trades, and our, our people had these trades. This is gifts that I found that the father gave our people also. It says, so the carpenter incurs the goldsmith, and he that smoothed with the hammer, him that smoothed the anvil, saying, it is ready for soldering, and he fastened it with nails. Now, I don't know about you all, my brothers and sisters. Why would I want a God that I have to help him stand up? <laughs> Come? Come. Oh. That it should not be moved. Now listen to what the Most High said. But thou, Israel, art my servant. So he's saying, you, we can't do that. He's saying, 
They can do that, but Israel is my servant, Jacob, Jacob whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof. So no matter how powerful man was, the Most High chose Abraham. He went through Abraham. Remember, we were the smallest. He said, and said unto thee, thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. So when you, when you, out here, when we talking to our family, the main key is show them that they're Israel. Because then they'll know why Israel can't do certain things. And, and that's just the most important we always want to do what the other nations do. And this shows it here. We, we always have to do what the other nations do. So it's just important that we just find ways to um, show our people that the Father made us lose our heritage. And it's time to get, uh, get it back and start following the law, start the statute and commandments. Con? Con, brother. Here you go. The water, brother. The water. The water. So it's probably easier just to keep it simple when it comes to this, this holiday. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. We gotta have milk, right? Yeah. And that's just a part of it. Like understand that's just milk. What you what we're when we're talking to them is just milk. And the milk will get you to the precepts is the understanding to teach them to, to give them something. But it you can have that milk and you can have that stuff, but they still could just roll out from you. You find out later that Santa was a lie. Right. Like everybody knows that. Right. But one of the commandments is thou shalt not lie. So we're passing on a tradition that that's a lie. Yeah, Chris Smith, right. Yep. And you, you could just leave it just like that at first. And that'll get them thinking like, that's right. And then go more deeper into it. Sometimes, you know, just leaving it real simple, you can get them thinking more. Because if you give them too much, or if you go too deep into the Bible, or the understanding, it might push them off. It all depends. Come, definitely. But that's what I do. Just keep it as simple as possible. The truth is simple, brother. It is like that. The truth is simple. That's why it works like that. Because it is simple. Yeah. It, it might come off as though I'm trying to look at it like the way I the way I was before. Like it might come off sounding condescending or you know. Somebody might take it the wrong way. And if I just keep it simple, make them think about it a little bit. You know. So that's what I got. Come. And that's a part of it because they want to articulate it in all these ways and have it all these ways and if they can't hear it a certain way, it can't be truthful. There's no way. Go ahead. I'm like, I'm tired of fighting, folks. I'm ready to be who he says I am. Next thing I want to talk about is pure. I care less about Christmas. I care less about Thanksgiving. I don't care why you celebrate it. If you, you don't know it's going to come to nothing, if you don't realize you're worshiping in vain, you don't want to, you want to say, oh, that Jeremiah 10 scripture, that's not talking about a Christmas tree. And I sing a song to them, silver and gold. Not talking about that. No, that's not talking about that. They got blinders over their eye. So to me, it's a waste of time. Be who he says you are. Do we know about pure? Do we get excited about pure as much as we do 
about what's still in us, Christmas. Let's, let's research, study, and put in our hearts the holy days so they become important and that light will shine. And when that light starts shining, people are going to respect it. Because when that light shines, the power, they have to have sacrifices tonight. People sacrifices. Because there wasn't enough people bowing down in front of that tree today. They know we the problem. So you might as well go ahead and be who he says you are.
again, we can go to, you know, we are not shown knowing the scriptures, so they're going to be like, well, when was he born? And we know through, when we go through the Hebrew Bible Academy, he was there from the beginning, and he's going to be there to the end. So what are we doing we're trying to put a day on that? It's revelation. It's a revelation. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I was here from the beginning, I'm here from the end. So if we err from not knowing the scripture, so it's like, then they ask you, was it day of Christ's birthday? There you go. And shalom, everybody. So, and just add one comment. Um, the lesson the elder brought out today, um, part of it in your Zonaman Bible Dictionary, Christmas is in there. And just highlight it. It gives you the understanding verses concerning how when Christmas came up, wasn't even about his birth. But it's a real good definition on Christmas in your Bible, in your Zonaman Bible Dictionary. So, what well, do you got it up? Get it? No, get it out. Yeah, please. Okay, Christmas. The anniversary of the birth of Christ and its observance celebrated by most Protestants and by Roman Catholics on December 25th, by Eastern Orthodox churches on January 6th, and by the Armenian church of January 19th. The first mention of its observance on December 25th is in the time of Constantine, about AD 325. The date of the birth of Christ is not known. The word Christmas is formed of Christ plus mass, meaning a mass of religious service and commemoration of the birth of Christ, a commemoration of the birth of Christ in harmonious, keeping with the events surrounding that birth. It's a natural and normal expression of love and reverence for Jesus Christ. The water brother. There's more on it? Yeah, that whole page. Is there? How old did he? That was the, the gist of it. That was the gist of it, okay. Yeah, that was just it. That's it. That's it. All right, does anybody have any uh, questions or comments on it? Something else, how. Oh, brother got it. But. Shalom, oh, everyone. So, uh, not much. I was just thinking. Uh, I think me and a couple of brothers this week were talking about Abram uh, when he came back to his father's house, and uh, you know, you know, Tira was an idolater. You know, he had all these uh, gods and everything in the house, and Abram had been taught by Noah and Shem, and he, you know. He went there and uh, I think he had his mother to fix a meal for the, the idols there. And uh, he spoke with him and realized, you know, they can't talk, they can't move, they can't do anything. I think you read the scripture earlier about all these idols are vain. They're nothing. They're nothing. They're vanity to the Most High. They're, they're nothing. So... That's what the people are doing. We don't realize it, but I think uh, I, have, I would have to agree with our brother. We have to know who we are. Even when we talk to, when I talk to someone, maybe a customer of mine in a car, I don't just go straight to Jacob or you or Issachar or you or so. We got, we, we get, well, eventually, yeah. We have to know who we are and that, that we're the children of the Most High and know that there's certain things that we have to do. Everyone else can't do like you read earlier. You know, so I think that's important and then we can go off because once we know, we can go off into other areas. Once we know who we are, then there are rules to follow. 
And then when you go to Psalm 147, 19 and 20, you know it talks about the law was given to us. It was given to no, no one else, like in Amos. He was given to no one else. So I can't follow something that they were not given. You know, I know you can't go into all that with a person who doesn't, you know, doesn't have the background, but just, just put it in, in our hearing that these, these idols are nothing to the Most High. It means nothing. You know, we can just pray for them. Kamba, it is that. So, so, uh, but yeah, uh, that was a great lesson um, because uh, nobody's birthday is in the Bible. Um, Christ, when he walked the earth, he never celebrated his birthday. You know, he didn't even want people to praise him. He said, praise the Most High, I came to do his will. You know, so, and also people used this holiday as an excuse to partake in the world, just to be part of the world, you know? Yes. They, they don't know nothing about Christ. They probably went to, to a Sunday service maybe once or twice during the year. You know, they just want to be, they just want free gifts and get drunk. You know, behave like Sodom and Gomorrah or at the times of Noah. You know? That's that pagan worship, that's a part of it. Right. The, the ignorant part of it is that, you know, they say, yeah, I don't believe in it, I don't care in you, I just do it to do it. But that doesn't mean you're not condemning yourself. It doesn't mean, you know, you can't, you can't just worship Satan just to have fun thinking that you're gonna make it in, in God's kingdom. And when we sit here trying to put in a lot of work within ourselves, or the script, like the scripture says, the righteous man is scarcely to be saved. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of work to do that. For frankly, I don't know why people still celebrate that today. Like, it makes no sense. They don't know, brother, just like I did. They don't know. And they don't have no fear of the, God, of, of the Most High because they don't even think about a God. And then when they do have other gods, and it's um, depending on, you know, I mean, I've been in different houses where they've had temples set up in the basement. I've been in those houses, and they'll have a whole wall, and they'll have santeros in, 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 the, in, the, in the land, the heritage, they have the santeros, and the santeros, and they'll go see them. And in my family, they'll go see them, and they'll go to church, and they go to them too. And, I, and now that I'm in this walk now, I, I, they all have divorce, all the children have problems, and I try to talk to them, but when I see them, I can see it in their eyes. I can, I can feel it on them, man, that they're, they know that they're off, and they know I'm gonna tell them, and they know I'm gonna talk to them. Because at one time, I was partaking with them to understand that. I didn't have anything with that something, or nothing like that. I was just like, no, oh, man, I didn't, I didn't look at it like I wasn't scared. I just, the most I had a spirit on me already when I went, like people would be scared to go to these people's houses, and I was like, that don't mean nothing to me. I already had that on me, that part of it. But I had no understanding for no God. You know, so that it, it, it was like, and? So was I trying to think that I was a God? Could I, was I deceiving myself to think that I was a God? Probably. You know, I could figure it out. Or I would, I would work a way out to get it done. And not with the Father, not understanding that, you know, we have that in our head that, I wiggled my way out of that one, or I worked it out. So, yeah, I remember that too with the, um, and it happens in this time of the year where the, there's, a, there's a card game, it's called Loteria. And I can't remember the other one that Ephraim uses, but it's a card game with all these images of deity gods, and they play this card, it's a card game, it gets played. Yep, I forgot all about that too, because. It does happen. It's called Loteria, and they have all these images of these gods, and they just read the names off, and they just play the game, and they're just looking at them, and I don't think any of the gods are strong or equal to the others. It's just like some number game or some call game or something. I really don't know, because I really don't play it. 
They would ask me to pray. I was like, nah. I didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to do it. I was like, nah. But it doesn't mean I wasn't being wicked somewhere else, you know? I just didn't do that part of it. I was like, nah, I didn't. So. Any sisters going to say you're good? All right. He don't see how they understand or hear. Um, in the book of also in Isaiah 44, like 17 on down to 19, the Most High, Most High said he he shut up their eyes and closed their ears. So after so much worshiping of these idols, he, he, he said he shut up the eyes and shut up the ears so they won't understand. It's like Isaiah 44, 17 on down to like 19. Uh, he said he shut up their eyes in their ears that they don't understand. That, it, that they won't even perceive it in their heart. All right? Really breaks my heart. Cause we've been lied to, misled for years. Calling out to the most high on this trail of tears. Higher. 